Good evening. I'm Colm Colgan, and you're welcome to the Business Enterprise Show, Ireland's only live web-based business TV program with over 2 million views in over 200 countries. And as always, we're coming to you live from our studios in the Cavan Crystal Hotel, Double Road in Cavan. There are many styles of business, many types of businesses. Some chase profits, some have other reasons for being in existence, and the other reason is awful, a social enterprise. Tonight, we have a social enterprise, and I'm joined by four members of Jobby, Barry Cavanagh, Irish McGowan, uh, Sharon McKenna, and Goshka. You're all very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no sexism involved. Barry has kind of is, 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 is the semi spokesman of it. So we'll start off with Barry and then I'll, I'll move on to his glamorous sidekicks. First of all, uh, Barry, Jobby, in a nutshell, what's its goals? Jobby is basically it's a social enterprise, like I call them, and social um, entrepreneurs. We basically. Um, we, we, we're a type of uh, uh, business model, really, that um, we look at the whole society, the whole community, and any profits that we actually derive from our company, we actually sort of share back to, into society, into the community, you know? Um, and most social entrepreneurs will derive a wage from it. You know, maybe we have to live from that, like, you know, but, but it's basically all profits that are reinvested back into the, the society or community that we work with. But job in itself, like, you know, I mean, th that was established, really, because of a... There was um, a couple of factors, really. Um, the, at, at, at present, I am a teacher. I work with the ETP in County Monaghan. And I found a sort of, um, after working with people saying C schemes or different sort of schemes, government schemes out there, a lot, not, not all, but a lot of the guys and girls would end up back in square one, back in social welfare, and that's like, you know. So I had to come up with a, a solution, really, to that problem. And um, coming up with Job E, really, I felt that um, we can, w I can work with people the two things that I love, working with people, creating jobs, and then the E for the environment and the job E, and working within the environment. So brought those two things together and come up to job E. And job E itself, like, I mean, what it does is we go into communities, we work with communities, and we develop a living landscape plans within those communities. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a big mouthful, a living a landscape, landscape plan. plan. Mm -hmm. And basically what that is is... What a is a live... What is the living landscape plan? It's basically working with what's already within the community. The landscape is already there. For example, say any village, any town, any city, there's a landscape around that village, town or city, right? And basically we go in there and we have a look at what's already there, like how many, what trees are there, what, if there's a lake there, bogs, so on, and the whole lot, like, you know? Then we come up with a plan to enhance that then as well, like, you know? There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is working, um, it improves the, the biodiversity there. That means the sum of all life that's there, okay? And it also um, enhances the, uh, the carbon offsetting potential. And today, as we all sort of probably hear the buzzwords there, this carbon thing, like, you know, um, carbon is a major problem. By 2020, Ireland is obliged to reduce its emissions all the way down to 1990, uh, uh, prior to 1990, lev 1990 levels. And if we don't, we'll be fined many hundreds of millions, if not up to billions of euros, like, you know? So the solution has to be um, taught, taught out. So job E actually uh, um, um, w will go a long way to alleviating that problem. You know. Now, one of the things there you said you did all, you do all this in towns and what they mm -hmm. have. Now we, we first came across each other f four or five years ago in the building of tidy towns. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was done that was well, it wasn't called an audit. We went around on a list to see what yeah. was there and what could be improved. Mm -hmm. Is it an enhanced version of that? It is a more of a, a very much enhanced, very professional version of that as well, where we uh, come in, because we're all uh, professionals in our fields, and we come in and do a, a proper study of um, town, village, city, and we would quantify exactly what's there, the value of it for carbon offsetting, the value of it to wildlife and that, and we'll work out exactly how it can be enhanced to become, for an example, pick a town anywhere, say Dublin even, like, you know, for, as a city, and to turn Dublin as probably the first city in the world as a carbon neutral city. Mm. And we can potentially do that, like I mean, working with this model. And that's, ob that's obviously a great goal to have, mm. is to make a city the, the first carbon neutral city. Um, obviously, we're, talk we're talking fledgling because I, I think Job E is only set up in the, in the fairly uh, recent past. Mm. Uh, but obviously, something that is, is, is up there with the pinnacle 
of, of, of what you want to do. Yeah. But you're starting smaller. Um, you've, you've, you've done an audit in one particular town. We have. We, we, we've done an what audit. What did you find there and what can you do to make it different? I have to say we, we started off in a small village just outside of Virginia in County Cavan called uh, Mahara. And Mahara in itself, like a fantastic community, fantastic people. They jumped on board from day one, like you know, they fundraise, they fundraise a lot of money to uh, make this happen for us. And we actually went in on the voluntary capacity to, to ensure that it actually works for them. We did find after the audit there that um, they can absorb just say um, the, the, um, about um, 30,000 tons of carbon, or 33,000 sorry, tons of carbon, right? The, the landscape can absorb at present, right? But unfortunately, the, the population of Mahara emits up to about, about six and a half to 7,000 tons. So there's a, a difference there of offsetting that we have to actually uh, work with. But so we drew up a plan for them then, like, you know, to, and to a landscaping plan and a development plan, which takes a number of years. And eventually, once it's fully implemented, which it will be, because the, the community is fully behind us in that, in that way, um, they'll end up with a, a, a surplus of about 6,000 tonnes that they can actually trade then with local businesses and so on, mm. which is very valuable to the community. And that village then would be the very first carbon neutral town or village, sorry, in Ireland. Mm. Now, just going back to specifically what could be done, landscape, and again, that goes back to our, like, uh, both our backgrounds in, in tidy towns, tidying the place up, planting a few trees. There's obviously more than that. Uh, in the landscaping, but obviously it's not just landscaping itself. What else does it take? Well, the landscaping and, and working with Tidy Towns, I have to say Tidy Towns, I find them fantastic. Working with them, um, they do an awful lot for our communities. They help tidy up, well, Tidy Towns is, is it's in, the, in the name. But basically we work with Tidy Town groups, but we also work with every other community group within the community, the church groups, the you know, the senior citizens, every, every other group, and bring them all together. And, and the difference with us as well, that we actually work with both the public and private sector as well, and bring it all together mm. in that way. We sort of a neutral sort of uh, entity within the whole thing. Honest broker. Honest broker in that way, like, you know, zero polarization around it. That's when we, <laughs> we come in honest and, and we uh, work a plan to suit everybody. Together. Now, in the landscape, the trees and, and, and the foliage and the plants that you would plant, would there be, what way would you look at putting them in? Would you go specifically for plants that absorb extra carbon mm. or would you be looking for plants that are to a particular region? Well we look at a couple of different things. We look at what's already there, you know, uh, we look at the hedgerows, we look at the grasslands, we look at the agricultural land, we look at bogs, the so all the rest of it is there and value all that to a certain value like, you know. And then we look at uh, certain plants that we can actually put in with those existing habitats to actually enhance it more to actually absorb more carbon in that way. So we draw up that plan, we work with farmers work with the county council, work with all landowners as well, like, you know what I mean, to enhance it even further. That mm. also benefits the agricultural sector because we're, we're coming up with solutions to different sort of uh, very carbon catch crops, crops that actually farmers can grow and quite valuable to them as well, um, that are used in other countries at the moment, like America and that, and they actually um, uh, absorb ten, tenfold what a tree can, for example, like, you know, so it can be potentially down the road, and we have been talking to the Minister for, for um, Agriculture and Horticulture, uh, Tom Hayes, and um, he um, is quite excited about this plan as well, like mm. going forward. Great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you have one meeting with a politician, you're throwing out buzzwords like going forward. Going forward. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> just, go, just going back to the carbon emission, it, it's something that kind of fascinates me. As well as, we'll say, the trees absorbing it, do you also look at ways where actual production of carbon? Can be reduced, be it by factory, be it by houses, be it by uh, by municipal buildings. Uh, a couple of things we're going to be doing. We're going to be hopefully working with SEAI Ireland, and also I'd be looking to we'd be looking to work with um, um, energy providers, um, and uh, especially energy providers that use a lot of sort of green energy, and working with that to tie in with local businesses as well to reduce their carbon footprint. Mm. You know, and also with the carbon um, catch crops I was talking about there a while ago. These businesses can work with, say, land landowners like agricultural sector and that produce these and to make sort of like charcoal. And charcoal itself is is a great uh, um, carbon sink, as they call it. Like you can actually produce this in bulk. You know, it will reduce all the carbon uh, either of the factories and businesses and agricultural sector. Then you actually plough it back into the land. So it actually improves the land and it locks away carbon for many hundreds of years. So it doesn't actually rot like ordinary wood would. Yeah. You know, because carbon, you know the 
the charcoal or what they call you you'll probably we'll all hear about this in the future this biochar that's what it's called and that would definitely be used then for that's I won't say going forward, but for the future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. It's not, it's not just Barry here. It's three very glamorous <laughs> sidekicks are here as well. Um, Eilish, what part do you play in it? Hello there. Um, uh, well, let's see, where would I start? Well, I was involved with Barry with the, um, the whole Mahara project. So we're kind of over and back there an awful lot there over the last probably a year and a half now or two years. And we started off there just doing it like a bulb planting. And um, that went very well, and then it kind of escalated after that then. And um, the whole project then just developed after that. So you started in Mahara two years ago, so it's not it's a kind a year of a... a, a well, a year and a half ago, but it's not kind of a... You don't go in, do, yeah, a, do a report in a week, and then two weeks later you start. This is ongoing, is it? Well, this part of it now, mm. it's kind of developed into job E then, in the last, just the last couple of months now. We've kind of met up the team and progressed it then to doing the biodiversity audit and the carbon offsetting plans and all that. Mm. So it's just kind of growing and from now on. Very good. Uh, Goshka? I'm an ecologist, uh, so uh, I am an expert on living things. <laughs> which uh, Are they two separate things? I'm an ecologist and I'm an expert. No, it's so. I <laughs> 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 um, so I would be responsible uh, for biodiversity audits uh, I will check what is growing there and uh, what uh, can be uh, saved, what can be um, made better. And uh, I will advise how to make the, the world better around our towns and villages. How to make the world better. Now that is a job I would love. <laughs> What's my function to make the world better? Just go back when you say ecology, you, you, you pick out what, what, what to keep and what to improve. Um, does it, does it, is not all the ecology good? Um, you know, we, we, we've seen stories where a motorway was held up because of a frog was doing what frogs do, or snails, or stuff like that. But is not all, uh, is all ecology not good? Well, it is, well, ecology is everywhere. Mm. Uh, ecology is about how the uh, living creatures live with each other and together within uh, the same speci species. But um, what we aim to is, uh, is to create landscapes where, um, where, uh, which, which, which would be healthy for everybody, not only for humans, but for uh, every other living creatures mm. around, and uh, which at the same time would be uh, better in carbon offsetting te terms. So, for example, um, the bogs, which used to be very disliked by the Irish because they would be the waste lamps, uh, they are great uh, carbon sinks. Uh, so if there are bogs which can be still saved by blocking the drainage, let's say, we can mm. do it. And then the bog will come back to the living stage and it will absorb huge amounts of carbon. So a bog which used to be used was say for getting turf for burning, which created carbon, yous have come up with a way or have discovered a way where it can actually the bog can absorb exactly the uh, carbon. It's fantastic. And uh, and also the uh, actually more valuable to the community in the long term than burning. Mm. You know, because it'll it'll be a cost that the community can recoup on an annual basis for forever. So yeah. it's sustainable. Like you know, where the bog itself if you if you actually uh, burn the bog, the bog is gone, you know. But if you actually preserve it, it's there forever. So therefore, you get the value of the carbon sinking, and then the, um, through carbon trading and that, you can actually use this, you know, mm. to buy, you know, to sell. You might as well say sell the the carbon offset potential of it. So is it only a matter of time before carbon becomes a commodity that we'll see in the ticker tapes? At present, it is. Is it? It is. It's being traded all over the world now at the moment, um, but. The, the way we look at it as well is you can actually buy uh, carbon credits on the other side of the world, but where, what happens? Is it really happening over there? Where by the job E itself, like, you know, we, you will actually physically be able to see it happening here because we'll be developing the plans within the community. The businesses will actually see where their money is going to. Mm. You know, it makes total sense. And at the same time, the aesthetics of our landscape will just be so brilliant, like, you know, uh, professional landscaping plans with lovely woodlands, lovely uh, more animals, uh, creating corridors for animals to go from one area to the next and so on, like, you know, mm. the benefits are just, it's win-win for everybody. 
I mean, I, again, if you think of Ireland as a tiny little country, and, and even if we were completely carbon neutral, what impact would we have, we say, on a global scheme, the likes of your China, which must produce well, I, I love to a lot of carbon. I was, I was going to try and think of a figure, <laughs> but I just said I'd leave it at a lot. <laughs> they are they are big producers, but strange enough, um, the Chinese at the moment only per head of capita uh, produce one, about one and a half tons per head of capita per annum, where the Irish now produce about um, eight tons per head of capita. So we're way ahead. We're actually worse than the Chinese <laughs> at the moment, believe it or not. Um, I think there's a lot more of them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it has been said as well, like uh, Ireland has improved as well. If uh, the whole world produced much the amount of carbon that we produce at the moment, you need four planets. You know, so we're going to hopefully alleviate that and lead away, the Irish lead away, which we're very good at as well, lead away and show them the world how to actually reduce the carbon. Because if we can do it, they all can do it mm. that way, you know. And um, follow our model, the way we're doing it. So mm. it's very positive that way. Irish. Sharon. Sharon. Sorry, Sharon, I beg your pardon. Yeah, um, the I mean, two blondes. <laughs> Um, I'm a horticulturist and I met Barry about a year and a half ago. Um, he was working along with us in our village of Glasgow's award winning village in Tidy Tynes. Um, he brought great ideas to us there and um, has helped, as I say, to bring us our goal. So it is. Um, at the moment, I'm furthering my studies in horticulture, so I'm brought on by um, the experience Barry has given me. Um, I grew up on a farm, so I have a great love for the wildlife for the outside. And um, we grow vegetables and my children get involved in it. So. When I heard Barry's plan of this year, I definitely wanted to get a board in it and be part of it. Which brings to the question, how did you all meet? Uh, will I answer this? <laughs> 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 it's basically, um, I find that people... It wasn't the two kind of some CD in a dating <laughs> site. <now. laughs> I, find, I find that people, um, you know, that uh, truly believe in nature and love nature and that sort of, we sort of go... We sort of almost find each other in a way, like you know, you know, we're sort of mixing similar circles and that. Mm. So we end up finding each other, and we we have the same sort of uh, ideas, really, on how to, you know, live well ourselves within our environment, like Oscar was saying, within our ecosystems and that, like, but to work, live well with everything else that lives here as well, you know, in that way, and improve it really for ourselves and all them at the same time. Mm. So, so we do we mix in the same circles, don't we, in a way, like. We're all good people, yeah. <laughs> all brilliant people. That, that goes without saying, naturally. Now, the jobs potential. You know, we, 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 we're a country that will depend on jobs to get back on its feet. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have a, quite a good figure mm -hmm. in mind. Um, at, uh, I, we predict now about 500 frontline jobs would be created within Jobby uh, nationally, um, and probably many thousand periphery jobs will be uh, tied into that as well mm. through the set a start startup of sort of a other enterprises within horticulture, within ecology, biology and so on, like that'll actually feed into job A in the mm. long term. Also there there be um, we can see by creating carbon neutral towns, villages and so on, that um, uh, the country will be very attractive for the sort of green tourism. And it'll really put the brand of Green Ireland on the map as mm. a truly green place to do business as well. I can see a lot a lot of business investment coming in here as well. Because if you have a country that really cares about its environment as much as it does about um, um, its people and, and business, they'd want to invest here as well, like, you know? Yeah. So I can, I can really see it as a very positive well, Particularly on the, on, on, on the tourism, because again, when you think of air area, mm -hmm. I suppose businesses are going to look at the major cities first and then they'll filter out to us. But tourism, people are looking, mm -hmm. people come over to Ireland to see nice landscape. We yeah. haven't, there's a lot, we don't have a, a lot of Vegas, we don't have kind of a London, mm -hmm. but people, I'd say probably 80% of the tourists that come mm -hmm. look for the rural settings. Mm -hmm. And if, if the villages and the towns and the countryside is made more beautiful, mm -hmm. um, that, that will help in, in, in itself. Absolutely, and uh, Jobby will definitely create that. And work, working alongside now, like, when we say we're going to create that, we're working with the community. The communities are going to create it. Mm. We're just going to help them do so. Like you know, so it's the people within Ireland, and it'll give the people sort of a um, a, a new love of their environment, as I say, and an awareness of it, and a sort of a they'll nurture it into the future as well. Because through us going in there and developing a plan and educating them through that plan and showing them the importance of what they're doing and that, they will mm. take care of it. Like any, if like. 
know. Yeah, even going back to inner city Dublin, you know, if if, 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 if you go along and paint a graffiti, it's there the next day. If you encourage the community to get rid of it, uh, they, 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 they have yeah. an interest in it. So between creation of jobs, making the countryside more beautiful, politicians must be beating a path to your door <laughs> with, 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 with kind of truckloads of money. Well, so far, um, we've been invited to uh, Minister um, Hayes, um, Minister for Agriculture and Horticulture. Uh, we had a meeting with him. Um, I have to mention Joe Riley. Um, he's fantastic. Joe Riley is our local politician in Bailabra. Um, um, he set up the meeting for us, and we uh, went and met Tom. Tom was very uh, excited about it. And he suggested then roundtable talks with two other ministers as well, the Minister for the Environment and the Minister for for heritage as well, and we're actually meeting the Minister of Heritage this Friday to discuss the, the, the adventure with herself, and after that then um, we'll be getting back to to Joe, and Joe will be setting further meetings then in the future then with the other ministers, and hopefully a round table uh, meeting, because I, I find that the, uh, the heritage fits into this nicely, environment obviously, and horticulture, like agriculture, like so mm. if we all work together we can make this happen. Now, making it happen is, is, is absolutely fantastic. Obviously, there's, there's a cost involved, funding is acquired. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, it goes back to the money, doesn't it? It always <laughs> comes back to the money, no matter what business you're in. Um, Where a social entrepreneur is, is, is wonderful, at the end of the day, it still has to get its funding. Well, we're, there's a couple of different ways we're going to do this. We don't want to be dependent on the government. Forever, it's, it's, a, it's good because the government don't want you to be dependent exactly, on the exactly. This is a good two way arrangement. Yes, uh, but we do want them involved at the early stages of the piloting of mm. Okay, now we're thinking about the uh, pilot in two more larger towns in in in, uh, in Cavan and after Mahra, the town for Finch Mahra there. And basically, we're looking for funding just to, to, to fund that pilot stage, just to prove that even uh, medium sized towns and large towns uh, it works there as well. And hopefully, it'll just spread out from there. Mm. But the other funding we're looking for in the future then is working with the existing business community and probably training providers like C schemes and, and, and different schemes like that that can actually come on board as well where we can actually um, work, we'll develop, we're after developing a brand, job e brand and that, which we be in the similar sort of model as the fair trade brand. Yeah. You know? And when businesses actually buy into it, they can actually buy in as a partner. You know, it's almost like it's sort of a a gold standard or a silver standard or bronze standard sort of partnership with us like you know in that mm. way so they'll invest a certain amount for those three different things with us as well so that'll actually fund the um the uh, business should i say go forward i've gone forward okay <laughs> so, but basically it's um, um, have a year. um and w because of that then we'd be able to stand our own um two feet and the way businesses will benefit from that then because they will like i was saying through their car carbon trading which they already have to do and they're obliged to do by 2020 mm. which is going to cost businesses an awful lot of money if they don't actually reduce the carbon in that we'll help them do so that way so they'll, they'll get the help from us doing that stage of it they'll also get a, um, a visual sort of a um, reference of where their money is going to but their communities bettering that their uh, um, corporate um, social responsibility csr um, if it ticks every box imaginable yeah. in that, like even more, we could have written the CSR for the government basically mm. with it, with it, with this program, um, which we only sorry. No, you're obviously getting great reaction from government ministers and everyone wants to meet you. What sort of reaction are you getting from businesses? Which so, at the end of the day, it's, it, it's going to cost them some money. So whereas businesses are all on for yes, we want to, yes, our car you know this carbon thing that's coming in eventually. Yeah, yeah this will help it. That's great. Uh, but as soon as they hear it's going to cost them money, they, they, they do tend to go, ooh. Well, uh, <laughs> well I think um, it's going to cost them money anyway, down the road, right? And it's probably going to cost them an awful lot more in the future to mm. clean up their act than working with us in the early stages to actually uh, develop a plan. And as part of their um, um, corporate um, social responsibility, which is all business, a lot of businesses already do this anyway, like, yeah. you know, and, and they invest in certain things, they invest in charities, invest in the community, which is a fantastic thing, like, you know. But uh, and uh, you know a percentage of that working with ourselves then they will offset the carbon. It'll almost tick the box there that oh well, job will take care of that. It's okay, you know it's a, it's a bit of a headache they don't have to worry about yeah. that way. So they get the value from it. So mm -hmm. it'll actually in the long run be worthwhile for them work with us than yeah. not, you know, in the future that way. So and I honestly believe like I mean businesses will benefit in the long term when the, the, when 
we become carbon neutral and you know the tourism picks up here like we were saying earlier and so on like all yeah. benefits now right. you're you're based in cabin monaghan what's mm -hmm. the future the future is really uh, going across the country like the 500 frontline jobs is really broken down like i was saying into every town we average around four um, employees per average size town mm -hmm. like like virginia now Canada. okay your ce scheme is i think nine months but at the end of the day if you if you have we say if you're creating a plan for a town and it has to be implemented, it may take longer than nine months. But again, yeah, is, is that job not just there for the length of that? No, no, it's there, it's there permanent. It's a permanent job. And uh, it's a permanent job in a way because when the plan, if you think of a town, it's not just a town, not just the buildings in the middle main street. Mm. It's the whole town and town lands all around that as well. Yeah. It's working with all the farmers, it's working with all the, the public private sector, the whole lot. Like, and we will come up with a plan which would work inside, you know, parallel with them. Yeah. We sort of together with everybody. And the guys will have to maintain it long term after that as well, like, and develop these plans mm. over a long, long period. Will so they be real jobs as opposed to internships and no, jobs? Proper jobs. Proper, proper jobs. full paid uh, jobs. Uh, and we want to be benchmark them against the. Uh, um, Politicians the, pay, that strikes me. Politicians being well, you know. <laughs> They're doing a good service for the community. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Start off as. Low wages like that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be benchmarked against um, uh, go, um, the okay. local authority. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, any communities out there, any businesses out there, how do they contact you? Um, we're in the process of developing um, a website now at the moment, and the website should be up and running in the near future, within probably two weeks' time. I reckon we should have it up and running. So they can contact us there. Jobby dot Jobby Ireland. Jobby Ireland. Jobby Ireland. Gmail.com. Yeah. Or the uh, email. The website uh, will it be Jobby dot Ireland or what? <laughs> or is the, is, the, is the name still up in the air? <laughs> it is still in the air. <laughs> still in the air. No, no problem. But in the meantime, uh, it's Jobby Ireland at Gmail dot com. Yeah. And the phone number. Sorry, it's phone number then. It says um, 087 But Jobby Ireland at gmail.com uh, would probably be the best initial contact to make. Um, if you think your business could benefit, or indeed if your community could benefit. So tonight's program as a slightly different business that we looked at. It wasn't the usual commercial type of business, but it's a business that probably will create a lot more jobs than a lot of commercial enterprises that are going at the moment. Uh, the four promoters are Barry Kavanagh, Alice McGowan, Sharon McKenna, and Goshka, who has a second name, but uh, <laughs> sorry, it's just out of my reach. But how many Goshkas do we know? Uh, to the four years, thank you for coming in, and thank you for the efforts that you're making to make uh, the environment a lot better, and as you said, Goshka, to make the world a better place. So that's it for this week. I've been Colm Colgan. You have been watching the Business Enterprise Programme, coming from the uh, Cabin Crystal Hotel on the Cabin Road in Dublin. Till we talk next week, good night. Cabin Crystal Hotel provides four-star accommodation on the edge of Cabin Town. Located conveniently on the Dublin Road, just 60 minutes away from Dublin. With 85 beautifully appointed bedrooms and a number of luxurious suites. We offer wedding packages. With our one wedding a day policy, we guarantee to make yours a special day. Enjoy a meal at our award-winning Opus One restaurant or have a drink in the atrium or residence bars. Feeling energetic? You can work out in Zest Health and Fitness Club or maybe pamper yourself and visit Utopia Health and Beauty Clinic 
or Avida's Hair Salon, both located on site. Situated only five minutes from Cavan Town Centre and local amenities. Cavan Crystal Hotel, gateway to Ireland's Lakelands. Cavan Crystal Hotel provides four-star accommodation